Chaitanya Data, I'm a consultant clinically in metabolic geneticist with Sujanan Clinic. Metabolic disorders are inherited disorders of various biochemical pathways. Typically, there is a block somewhere in the flow of metabolites which are leading to energy generation. This causes a buildup of toxic chemicals or an energy deficit. These biochemical derangements typically show up as acid base imbalances on ABG or a buildup of lactate or ammonia, electrolyte uh, disturbances, as well as a deficiency of energy which is manifesting as a hypoglycemia or a ketosis. Typically, these uh, metabolic derangements, the acronym called GALAC, which is glucose, ammonia, acid-base imbalances, lactate, electrolyte and ketones, forms the basis of a biochemical diagnosis. And these are very simple tests which are available in various hospitals and laboratories as well. Based on the pattern of abnormalities noted on these basic tests, an IEM may be suspected. However, in certain conditions like non-ketotic hyperglycinemia, all these metabolites could be normal. So a high degree index of suspicion is what is definitely required and further advanced tests are necessary to confirm the IEM that we are dealing with. To be able to consider treatments for metabolic disorders, it is not sufficient only to suspect an IEM or diagnose based on the uh, basic biochemistry, but it is also necessary to identify the exact metabolites which are causing the toxicity or energy deficiency in the body. Therefore, most of the tests are carried out in samples such as blood, urine or CSF. In these samples, the spillover of metabolites, that is excess of metabolites may be diagnosed. Like for example, citrulline could be high in citrullinemia or uh, there could be some deficiencies. Like for example, uh, the GALT enzyme could be deficient in a case of galactosemia. So diagnosing these disorders is very, very crucial. It is necessary that the samples for the above tests are collected in an acute or a decompensated state before any kind of fluid, acid base or other corrections are done in the child. Because once these corrections are done, it distorts the biochemical profile and then reaching a definitive diagnosis becomes difficult. So sometimes this can lead to an incorrect or no diagnosis in cases of embolism metabolism. So it's always a good idea to collect about 2 to 3 ml blood in a heparin tube and about 10 ml urine sample and keep it aside before initiating any acute management. These critical samples are really going to help us in diagnosing the specific type of IEM. Therefore, a metabolic diagnosis is typically achieved when we have the clinical presentation, the results of the basic biochemistry, as well as the uh, outcomes of the advanced tests. So completing the metabolic profile is a crucial aspect in a uh, biochemical diagnosis. The other aspect that we need to look into is sometimes alternative samples like CSF may be required and they could be diagnostic in conditions like non-ketotic hyperglycemia or a GLUT1 deficiency. Similarly, enzymes could be studied for their deficiency and these are also diagnostic tests like biotinidase deficiency, you will get a biotinidase enzyme which is deficient. In certain conditions such as glycogen storage disorders, the clinical presentation and a liver biopsy is sometimes diagnostic. However, it is necessary to confirm the condition based on molecular genetic testing. Similarly, complex conditions such as mitochondrial disorders, congenital disorders of glycosylation may be suspected based on the clinical presentation and certain clues may be obtained by tests such as transferrin isoelectric focusing for CDG or lactate pyruvates or a bio muscle biopsy for mitochondriopathies. However, a definitive diagnosis is only possible based on NGS or exome based studies which studies multiple genes at one time and that molecular diagnosis is definite.